Nothing But the Words, episode number 21, Black Books Matter. Welcome to Nothing But the Words, the podcast that gives you everything you need to know to write a phenomenal book. Now, here's your host, your author coach, Candace L. Davis. Hey there, and welcome to Nothing But the Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis. Typically, when I sit down each week to record a podcast episode for you, I'm super pumped. I'm in high spirits because I'm doing what I've been called to do, which is to help you write a great book. But I'm recording this episode while protests are happening all over this country in the wake of yet another unarmed Black person being murdered by police. And these protests come on the heels of some very long trying months and some very long trying weeks. George Floyd lost his life to a police officer while three other police officers stood by and watched him die over a matter of minutes. Mr. Floyd's story needs to be told. Ahmaud Aubrey's story needs to be told. Breonna Taylor's story needs to be told. Philando Castile's story needs to be told. Sean Bell's story needs to be told. Sandra Bland's story needs to be told. Eric Garner's story needs to be told. Jordan Davis's story needs to be told. Trayvon Martin's story needs to be told. And your story needs to be told. For hundreds and even thousands of years of history, the people in power, whoever they were in any particular civilization or country, controlled the narrative. They controlled what stories were documented, what stories were largely ignored. Now, the news media does a necessary and important job. Reporters are frontline, in the moment, tellers of the story, but they are tellers of the story of the moment. They can only tell the stories their editors or producers or executives deem worthy. And once a story is no longer news of the day, it mostly disappears from the headlines. But books last, my friend. If you're a white person listening to this, please stay with me. Stick with me through this episode. So many of my white friends have said they want to be a part of the solution to racial injustice and inequity, specifically in the United States, but they don't know where to start. There are tons of resources online. Simply Google ways to be anti-racist and you will find long list of things you can do. At the same time, I suggest seeking to understand. Seek first to understand the Black experience today and how we got to this place. Seek first to understand the experience of someone who's different from you in real ways. Seek first to understand the experience of someone who appears to be different from you in real ways, but probably has more in common with you than you imagine. If you are a Black person listening to this podcast, or frankly, any person of color or person in a marginalized group, and you've been thinking about telling your story in a book, I am here to highly encourage you and to support you to go beyond thinking and learn whatever you need to learn to get your book written. The world needs your story. The world needs your wisdom, your experience, your knowledge, your insights, and your expertise, whether it's a story of injustice. And if you're a Black person in America, injustice has undoubtedly played a role in your life, but that isn't necessarily what your book is about. It could be a story of overcoming, of achievement, of success. It could be a book that teaches people how to do something. Whatever it is, this country needs your book. This country needs your story. This country needs your knowledge. Even if the story isn't your own, but you want to document something you believe is important to your community or to the nation at large or to a particular industry, you have a responsibility to write that book and get it out to the world. The world needs the story you've been thinking about telling. The world needs the book you've been thinking about writing. Now, I am not here to tell everyone they need to write a book. I don't believe that at all. But I am here to tell you that if you have a desire to write a book and you've been delaying writing the book you feel drawn to write, you are denying not only yourself, you're denying the world the difference that your book could make. Now, if you're not sure your book can actually make a difference, let me tell you about an experience I had. When I was in the fourth grade, my mother handed me a book with a 
cover that had a picture of very serious looking black people on it. It was called Blacks in Science, and it was written by one of her closest friends from high school. Now, my mother and her classmates attended school in the segregated South. They went to an all black school. That was the only place they could legally go to school. And they actually got a great education there because even though the resources were not provided for them, they were as they were to the white schools, they had teachers who loved and cared about them and were really invested in their education. So this friend, a black woman from the Jim Crow South, went on to become a nuclear physicist. My mother went on to become an attorney. So they came through these segregated schools and went on to create very successful careers for themselves. The nuclear physicist, my mother's friend, wrote Blacks in Science. It did not go on to become a New York Times bestseller, but it opened eyes to possibility. I didn't go on to become a scientist, but looking at that book as a nine-year-old made something seem possible to me that I might not have otherwise thought was possible. And when my older daughter said as a child that she planned to become a doctor when she grew up, I never doubted for a moment that she could do so. Today, she's completing a dual residency in internal medicine and psychiatry. But when I was a kid, I rarely saw Black people in science on TV or in the movies. The only Black person in science I remember learning about in school was George Washington Carver, and surely there had been some scientists of color since him. But because I had a book called Blacks in Science as a child, that possibility was made real for me. It was made real for me, the possibility that Black people could do all kinds of things that I never saw them do in the media. Now, yes, people in my family were doing all kinds of things that I never saw Black people do in the media. But holding that book in my hand, I didn't have a scientist in my family at that time. Holding that book in my hand made that a real possibility. Hattie Caldwell, the author of that book, had to self-publish. And she did it at a time when self-publishing was much more difficult than it was right now. Now, I don't know how many people read her book or how many other children were exposed to it, but I know I was exposed to it and it made a difference for me. Black stories have always mattered. Black books have always mattered. But until recently, they've had to fight for a place on the bookshelf. Now, think about some of the book's Black authors have written over the decades and the difference they have made in this culture. Harriet Jacobs wrote Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl in 1861 at a time when abolitionists wanted to use slave narratives to fight for the abolishment of slavery. And her book has lived on to be taught in classes all these many years later. James Weldon Johnson wrote the autobiography of an ex-colored man in 1912. Richard Wright published Black Boy in 1945. Ralph Ellison published The Invisible Man in 1952. James Baldwin published Go Tell It on the Mountain in 1953. Toni Morrison published The Bluest Eye in 1970. Maya Angelou published I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings in 1969. Alex Haley wrote Roots, The Saga of an American Family in 1976. Percival Everett wrote Erasure, In 2001, Jasmine Ward published Men We Reaped in 2013. Tayari Jones published An American Marriage in 2018. If you have missed out on any of the books on that list, find it, order it, check it out from the library, read it. These are books that share a Black experience in a way that really does make a difference. These books change lives. They let Black people see themselves at a time, in many cases, where there were very few books in which we could see people who looked like us, in which we could see experiences like our own played out. Many of these authors were the fortunate chosen few. Their peers were denied the privilege that they had, the privilege of publishing their story in a way that other people could read it. You, however, don't need that permission. It doesn't matter if you plan to write a memoir, a novel, a how-to book, or a subject matter expert book. You have a privilege that generations before us could not enjoy. When Hattie Caldwell, who wrote Blacks in Science, published her book, it cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars to self-publish. Back then it was called vanity publishing because only people who were considered vain enough to spend that kind of money would publish their book through self-publishing. 
there was a mythology that if you self-published, it was simply for vanity's sake and because you couldn't write a book that was good enough or important enough for publishers to choose you. She made a decision to choose herself and you now have the option to choose yourself and do it for very little money. You can write a book right now and publish it on platforms where it will be available to any and everyone to buy and read. You can share your story with the world. You can share your knowledge and your expertise and shine a light on the Black experience, which as we all know, is a diverse experience. So we need more than one book to document that experience. You can shine a light on Black achievement, Black excellence, and Black humanity. And in doing so, you shine a light on the truth. In doing so, you help move us forward. By telling your story, you claim a piece of history from the people who would tell it wrong. By sharing your knowledge, you deny those who would say that we don't have knowledge to share. Do not allow other people to tell your story or to suppress your knowledge. We cannot complain that our stories are co-opted if we don't take every opportunity to own them ourselves. Take ownership of your story. Write your book. Thanks for listening to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis, and I'll see you next time.